Lord has made. Let us rise and by your spirit as we sing to the Lord. those of you who are here and those watching online we welcome pastor bobby and carissa too and maryland is here Lee in the nursery over there yes glad you're with us too overwhelming week i'm sure but now you're with family and we're gathered with family to remember that um, the spirit says i bring you together because jesus christ is risen and you are made new to respond with praise and thanksgiving for all the Lord has done. And so, sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace. From God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship that we share with one another in the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And as God has greeted and welcomed us, will you turn and bless one another in the name of the Lord. Has broken like the first morning, like the spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for the springing, fresh from the world. Creation of 
Confession, hear these words from Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. All things are filled with weariness. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. And let these words be our prayer. Lord, we acknowledge your creation, yet day after day we turn from you. Forgive us our sins, we pray, for you alone restore and give life anew. Amen. Yeah. 
we live for you.
and receive these words of assurance from Psalm 89. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, for who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? The heavens are yours and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. Thanks be to God. mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands for I will always sing of when your love came down to me I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love and the sea. Your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. For I will always say, oh, when you love came down, yeah. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, receive our praises. And now speak to us the life-giving, sanctifying word that is Jesus Christ, that we may truly live in your love forever. Amen. I love the world, and Jesus Christ sent us to the world of God's love. 
But today's verses from the Gospel of John chapters 3 and 17. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 17, 13 to 18. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An old youth group discussion tells this story and asks what it says to us about being a Christian today. On a dangerous sea coast where shipwrecks often occurred, there was once a crude little lighthouse and life saving station. It was weathered and worn from all the storms and the rough weather. The rescue boat had seen better days. Those in the lighthouse kept a constant watch over the sea, and they went out day or night in search of the lost. Some of those who were rescued, and others who knew what the station was about, wanted to join up and help out the lighthouse. New boats were bought. New members were welcomed. The lighthouse became a popular gathering place. Soon, people preferred spending time together in the lighthouse rather than going out into the cold, wet, and rough sea on life-saving missions. Then one day, a large ship was wrecked off the coast. Boatloads of wet, half-drowned people came to the lighthouse. They were cold, they were sick, they were miserable. Some spoke a strange language, and the lighthouse got crowded and dirty. Many were not happy with what happened. At the next meeting, they voted to suspend life-saving operations. After all, they put the lighthouse at risk. They interrupted daily activities, and it was unsafe to go out to sea. And so today, that lighthouse is a museum. The story asks, are you striving to be the best church for your community? Or is your desire just to be known as the best church in your community? Are you being the most faithful Christian for your neighbors? Or for your own satisfaction? Do you hear the difference? The difference is about our passion our loves, our first love for Jesus and the mission he gave us as disciples and as his church. You could say it's a way to reimagine what our scripture passages are revealing. I know we know John 3.16 by heart, and it's so familiar, we we may not be hearing what it really says. So listen, God so loved the world. The world doesn't say God so loved the church. Doesn't even say that God just loved me. But that God loves the world. All creation from rocks and trees and skies and seas to the hungry, to the stranger, the unhoused, and even the enemy. To institutions and societies, even to Mozart and Shakespeare and Van Gogh. And then John 3.16 says, God so loved the world he gave his one and only Son. To say God is actively and graciously present in this world. Not just in church, but in the world. We human beings encounter the true and living God in the everyday. We experience Jesus in life as we know it and live it. And then the verse says, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So the verse is revealing that this creation that God loves, that God is present in, 
needs rescue, deliverance, saving. That's the way God loves the world, by giving himself. This is the way that God loves the world, which is so much in need of saving. The Father sends his Son to be sacrifices for sin and death forevermore. The Lord is really here, and we are made for life with the Lord God. The true God is the God of saving love, who loves by giving himself, and who loves the world as it is by being the God of the cross and resurrection. This creation, in all its broken and rebellious ways, is the object of God's love. In John 17, Jesus prays with the Father. He's on his way to the cross to fulfill this will of the sovereign Lord who loves the world and who is out to get back what belongs to him. He prays that while those who believe in Jesus are not of this world, he does not desire us to be taken out of the world. Rather, he prays to send believers into the world as he was sent into the world. Verse 16 and 18, They are not of the world, even as I am not of it, As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Not of the world, sent into the world, as it is. Have you ever heard the saying, Christians are to be in the world, but not of the world? You know that? It's a mashup of these verses. This is the heart's desire of Jesus for you who have been saved by his grace forgiven completely, and assured of eternal life. This is how believers are to act and live in thankful response for the gift of salvation, living now in union with Christ. Just as God so loved the world, now you and me, we are sent into the world to love the world in Jesus' name. Not fall in love with the world, Not to have the world or to be owned by the world. When Jesus calls us to love the world, he doesn't mean to lust after it. Rather, Jesus sends us into the world to love the world as he so loved the world in the name of the Father by going to the cross for the sin of the world. Our calling is not to fix the world. It's not to blame the world, but to minister in the world so that Christ can transform the world and make all things new. We are sent into the world, its sufferings, its trouble, its institutions, its societies, to transform what is broken and in rebellion. Jesus prays about this. Because he knows this is not something we could ever do on our own. Jesus knows that the world, its powers and pressures and pagan ways, hates you and me who are disciples of Jesus. And Jesus knows our temptation and our hope for security and safety. So we're reminded here that Jesus has protected us from the evil one. Verse 15, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. It's an echo of John 3.16 and that promise that as we live for Jesus, we are granted eternal life. We will not perish. We are eternally secure. The world cannot have us. and We cannot have the world, but we are sent into the world. We, our church, our family, our lives, we are sent to love the world as Jesus loved the world and gave himself up for it. It's God's word that will give us the wisdom to do this, and we're going to talk about all that in just a second. But Jesus prays that we are sanctified by the truth. His word is truth, and it's God's word that will guide us in this because of two things. The world is hungering for God and doesn't know it, And second, 
it is so difficult to truly love the world. Let's talk about those two things. Many are hungering and thirsting for transcendence today, to experience something bigger than themselves, to make sense of all the beauty and wonder and ignorance and trouble of life today. I mean, let me ask you, do you know what's happening tomorrow? Of course you do. There is going to be an eclipse tomorrow, right? Kids, you are getting out of class to go do that, right? Have, they, have your teachers taught? Talk to your teachers about this. You can, get a, you can get something out of this tomorrow. I'm just telling you, right? But everywhere you turn, someone's talking about it. Highway signs caution people that the roads will be full. Meteorologists are cautioning us about looking directly at the sun. I mean, everywhere you go, you can get these glasses. Everywhere. They're everywhere. And you can have them for tomorrow, right? People are even spending $1,000 to stay overnight in Toledo to watch this. Toledo. Why such a big deal for what is easily explained by science? Because God has placed eternity in the hearts of humankind, and each is drawn to some connection, not merely with creation, but the Creator. Tomorrow, people will experience this. But then what will they do with it? See? We are sent into the world to praise the Creator God who beautifully ordered this world. For only praise will complete tomorrow's experience and make for an encounter with the Creator God and Lord, which then invites trust in the Heavenly Father in a relationship of faith in the Lord. We are sent into the world because if we are not there, how will they know? And almost all of us here know that song by Leonard Cohen, right? Hallelujah. I know you know it. I know you have heard it. It's been covered by more than 300 artists from Bob Dylan to U2 to Justin Timberlake. It's been sung for Olympic celebrations, in movies and TV shows from American Idol to Saturday Night Live. It's been played at memorials for the Boston Marathon bombing and the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting. It's been at national events like the COVID pandemic remembrance for those who lost their lives and at the National Republican Convention as well. You've heard it. Canadian singer Katie Lang said in an interview shortly after the writer Leonard Cohen's death that she considered this song to be central, core to human life because it's about the struggle, she said, between having human desire and searching for spiritual wisdom. It's being caught between those two places. People are caught, trapped. And the song leaves us these words. It's a cold and broken hallelujah. Yes, it is, because it's a hallelujah without God, without praising the Lord, without the love of Jesus. And it leaves people cold and broken. But still, most people want to sing hallelujah. It's in our hearts that we're made for that praise. So who will show proper praise unless we're in it with them? Unless we're right there alongside them? And so Jesus prays, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world. And then as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Sent to love the world as Jesus loved the world, by his cross and resurrection. Now let me apply this then, first as a pastor. Let this word sanctify you, make you holy and assure you and strengthen you 
to live differently for Jesus' sake. Because to be sent into the world as Jesus was sent into the world means the cross. And we don't wish a cross on anyone. I have sent them into the world. You and me sent into the world as the Father sent Jesus into the world. What was that like for Jesus? Well, God became one of us. And he shared human life. He knew what it was like to be hungry. To be tired after a long day's hard work. He was falsely accused. He was misunderstood. He was blamed for things he didn't do. He was tempted severely to the nth degree as you have been tempted. He suffered. And he sacrificed himself. And he came not to be served, but to serve. And he says, he prays, Father, as you have sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. For us to be sent into the world means we'll face what is broken and troubled too. We don't pray this way very often. We pray most of the time that God spare us from the world. How many times haven't we struggled together when cancer is diagnosed or gathered around a graveside? Any time life isn't going the way we thought it should go. Take us out of the world or protect us. And the Father does grant us a prayer of protection from the evil one, from the one who seeks to devour you, from the one who is the prince of this world and has brought misery and death to the world. But do you see now why you and I are not spared human suffering? Do you see why Jesus prayed my prayer is not to take them out of the world? I have sent them into the world. Because the Lord needs his people there. In cancer wards. In prisons. In cemeteries. In corrupt and unjust countries in times and places of poverty and famine and other hurts and pains and troubles where tears are shed at places of the cross because that's where God so loves the world. It is at the cross that humanity and the divine meet in the saving love of God. Now we take up our crosses and follow Jesus to minister to the world in Jesus' name. And this is hard, but it is holy. In our times and seasons of trouble and loss, to share our prayers and our waiting and our burden with others who also suffer so. On New Year's Day, 1919, Karl Barth preached this word of God to people overwhelmed. It had not been a great decade. Spanish flu, World War I. And he said, in good times I forgot God long enough. I do not intend to lose God anew in evil times. I see God pronounce judgment because God will reveal God's grace on earth. I see God destroy because God wants to build. I hear God say no in order that God's great yes can be heard again. Yes, we can sigh and still be blessed. And this is why we are sent into the world in all its broken and rebellious places, to share with people those deep and mournful sighs, to open our souls to blessing. This is one way we are sent into the world, to love the world as God so loves the world. And we need each other as church to pray and serve together as we take up such heavy crosses 
But thankfully, the Lord needs his people in places of beauty and wonder and work and rest too to lead the praise and thanksgiving that wouldn't come any other way. So here's another blessed and gracious way we are sent into the world. Our Christian Reformed teacher, Herman Bavink, said this, around the same time Karl Barth was encouraging us to sigh and also receive blessing, Herman Bavink said, we are not satisfied being saved. Now the Lord's work begins in earnest. We become co-workers with God. For the word of God is not only the fountain of saving truth, but the norm of one's whole life. So God has given us as his new people tasks of work and family and neighborhood and earthly citizenship to love the world by our thankful living for God's good gifts of life. This is also how we are sent into the world in Jesus' name. The history of creation begins with a wedding. Adam and Eve. The first family in the garden. And the history of creation ends with a wedding. Great wedding feast of the Lamb and His church. We are sent into the world to testify to the goodness of the blessings of life that the Creator God structured into human life. Male and female, He created them. Husband and wife in marriage together to establish family. And so the Lord says to you and me, love there also. Love as Jesus loved. Take up the burdens and the joys, the sacrifices and the sufferings. Bless and give yourself. Spouses really and truly love each other. Siblings really and truly love each other. Male and female, be thankful, for together you bear the image of God. Be content with your identity, for the Creator God knit you in a fearfully and wonderfully way in the womb. It is in families that our true humanity is nurtured. And matured. So, is it time for us to renew our joy and commitment to family life? And most all of us are also sent in the world to work. Work is probably the primary way many of us are sent into the world every day. But we are sent into the world as Jesus was sent to love the world. So, work does not define us. Jesus was a carpenter, but he wasn't all that. He's the Savior, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Lord, the man of sorrows, and the God of the cross and the resurrection. And so our work points beyond our own selves and beyond our earthly providing. Students, your education isn't so you can get a great job someday, but to learn to be sent into the world. To love the world in the name of Jesus who was crucified and rose again. There is a holiness to our work if we will love the world in the name of Jesus. Our contemporary testimony says it this way. We work for more than wages and manage for more than profit so that mutual respect and the just use of goods and skills may shape the workplace. While we earn or profit, we love our neighbors by providing useful products and services. Not to be shaped by the workplace, but to shape the workplace with justice and providing. But we don't work all the time. Our work must also be done in the rhythms of Sabbath rest. Here is how we can love the world with the saving love of Christ. To work and rest. To labor and to keep the Sabbath day. Because above all we are made for fellowship with the Lord. We are to worship and in thanks receive the delights of creation with joy and help the world to play and feast and praise the Lord. So as good as you might be at your job, To love the world better 
be better at keeping Sabbath. Of all the practices of faith that you are teaching your children, are you teaching them to remember and keep the Sabbath day? Not as a day for yourselves, because you are sent into the world that is restless and weary and separated from life with God. Well, there is so much more to be said about how we are sent into the world, about gratitude and prayer and more. But this is enough to take us back to the lighthouse story. You and your own faith, you with your family, together you are sent into the world as Jesus was sent into the world. Have you considered that lately? That your family has a mission in the world. That your marriage is to bless the community. That your day is to be sent into the world to love as Jesus so loved the world in the name of the Father. Like most of us, I love our church. I'm quite content to spend my time and energy, my money and myself on our church community. I could fill my week with our church. But this prayer of Jesus moves me beyond us in our church to participate together in ministry for the sake of the world, neighbors and need and even justice and peace. So to help us as we go from here, there is a bulletin board just outside of Joel's office. It says, Creating Connections with Christ. It's for pictures and for notes about the ways we are sent into the world to love the world. It's not really for church things, but neighborhood events. The ways we join and serve with and serve in our communities. When you share in another's burden or join in a community service event or connect through sacrifice or give praise for creation's wonder or simply be there with your neighbor. Could you post a note about that? Write it and put it on the board. Because in these simple, holy ways, we begin to live out the prayer of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your saving word. May it sanctify us. May it shape us. May it transform us and our loves and our heart's desire that by your Spirit you send us into the world And you send us now to pray in this moment, to pray for the world, to hear hear the cry and to give voice to the call for justice and to serve. And so hear our prayers. We pray for the desperate places in the world. We pray for peace at the Ukrainian border for peace in the Middle East. We pray for peace in divided countries like Nigeria, peace in countries held hostage by gang warfare like Haiti. We ask for peace. We pray for those who are there, who are striving and giving of themselves, sent into the world there, and may you bless and multiply their efforts. Heavenly Father, hear also our prayers for one another. Pray for Phyllis David as she has cataract surgery this week, that it will go well and healing may come for her. We pray for those who carry chronic illness with them each and every day and ask that you be their strength for today and bring bright hope for tomorrow. We 
Think of those with mental illness or emotional struggles and ask that you bring peace and safety and care to them. We think of those not able to be here with us, limited by human limitations, those shut in. Today we think of Gladys Lubin. So good to see her last week on Easter. Pray for Grace Morris as well as you watch over them and the many others. We thank you that you brought uh, Bobby and Carissa and Marilyn and Talia here. And I'm sure it's overwhelming to come to a new place and ask that you would grant your peace and blessing on their place within our church family and their community as well. Lord, we look over the schedule of our church for this week and see many uh, opportunities to create connections to Christ. Pray especially for those opportunities with uh, younger families, with moms and preschool kids, the opportunities there this week for GEMS program this week, for times at coffee break and the Bible studies and small groups that are going on. In all of these ways, may it be about more than ourselves. May our connections with you lead to a connection and a way to go into the world with the love of Jesus. Lord, our Bible verse for the week for the month is about our spiritual giftedness. So we pause to give you thanks for the gifts you have placed within us and ask for your leading Holy Spirit that we may use them well for your praise. And Lord, today and in a moment, we'll reflect for a moment on uh, our day once a year to uh, pray for healing where there has been abuse of any kind in our communities. We're glad that you help, make, help us make this place a place of safety and care. And we pray for restoration for those who have gone through any form of abuse. And so, Lord, hear our prayers today and watch over us in the name of Jesus. Amen. The deacons will lead us in our time of offering. Today's offering is for Timothy tuition assistance. Let us pray. God of wisdom, we thank you for the gift of education. We lift up all our children to you. Grant them wisdom and understanding as they study at school and help them to persevere through any challenges they may face. May they feel your presence throughout the school year. Bless the teachers and staff of Timothy Christian Schools as they uphold biblical truths and inspire Christ-centered leadership in their students. Bless the offering we give you today. Help us to be generous givers, cheerfully giving of our time, talents, and resources. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
died and been here since eternity says, Let the snow live in us today. For the sun came to us, condemning but to say, So we go with this joy as a spirit leads us on. Let the snow live in us today. So we go. Every year, the Christian Reformed Church sets aside one Sunday in the year to acknowledge and to recognize the painful reality of abuse in our broken world. It is an opportunity to lament and grieve with those who have been harmed by abuse in any form, and to commit again to doing what we as a Christian community can do to prevent it, and to inspire congregations to address abuse in ways that seek justice and healing for all those who have been impacted by this sin. The theme for this year's Abuse Awareness Sunday is Safe People, Safe Congregations. And here is our invitation to reflect on how we might contribute to a safe environment by being a safe person. A safe person is someone who treats each person with dignity and respect who actively listens with compassion and empathy to others, who acts with honesty and integrity, who respects others' boundaries, admits and apologizes after wronging someone, and advocates for the marginalized and the vulnerable. Many of the postures listed are reflected in what the Apostle Paul describes as keeping in step with the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit, Paul writes, is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In their essence, safe congregations are made up of people who exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. And so let us offer up our lives in thanks for what God has done for us by uh, reflecting again on being people of the fruit of the Spirit. Please follow along on the screens as our response of gratitude. O oh, bounteous Spirit, I ask you to bring forth my life your fruits. The fruit of love. The fruit of joy. The fruit of peace. The fruit of long suffering. The fruit of kindness. The fruit of goodness. The fruit of gentleness. The fruit of meekness. The fruit of temperance. I invite you to rise in body or spirit to receive the blessing of the Lord as we are sent into the world in his name. <coughs> May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord turn his face toward us and give us his peace, which the world can neither give nor take away. Amen.
Yeah. 